In this video, we're going to get some practice with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, making a page uh, that uses some of the samples in the developer help. And what we're going to build in this video is this uh, Coropleth map of vaccination rates in Washington counties as of May 18th, 2021. Um, you'll see that there's a legend here and that the counties are colored based on the percentage of people fully vaccinated in each. And in a future video, I'll talk about pop-ups, uh, adding pop-ups to these uh, counties. Um, now the data comes from uh, Washington State Health Department and Washington State Office of Financial Management, where, which is where I got the uh, total population estimates for the county. Um, I prepared the data originally in QGIS and uh, you can see if I open the attribute table, some of the attributes on here are really basic. Um, so I've got the number of fully vaccinated people as of May 18th, estimated population as of 2020 from the Office of Financial Management, and then I calculated a percentage just by dividing these. Um, I then converted this to GeoJSON, so to do that in QGIS is pretty easy. You can just uh, export and save the features as. And uh, you're going to choose GeoJSON from the dropdown. And one tip for the JavaScript API, uh, ArcGIS one, is that you have to select um, uh, WGS84 EPSG4326 for your GeoJSON, or it's not going to work. You're going to get a really cryptic buried error message, and uh, it's going to be hard to figure out. So uh, you've got to use 4326. You know, I figured it out by reading the documentation, which is not a bad idea. Probably should have done that sooner. Um, so what you get when you make the GeoJSON um, is uh, just one file. Now uh, you can, um, in the JavaScript API, you can load in web maps from ArcGIS Online and do all your designing there. But let's suppose that you didn't want to do that or couldn't do that, and so you were just uh, wanted to make your map based on files. Well, you'd be using a GeoJSON file like this one, and then you wouldn't be maintaining or have to maintain a web map on ArcGIS Online. So might give you a little more uh, flexibility and that GeoJSON file can live uh, right in the very same folder as your uh, HTML files and indeed that's what we're going to do. I've created this uh, folder here where we're going to do everything. It's uh, just in C data vax. That's where I've placed this file and what we're going to do is put our HTML right here uh, just for and run it off the file system uh, just for testing. So uh, what we can do here is uh, let's create a new uh, text file. And a lot of times it's standard to call your HTML page just index.html, um, your launch page. Notice how when I did that, it, in my computer, it associates Firefox with uh, HTML. And I'm going to use Firefox in this demo, uh, and you'll, you'll see why a little bit later, uh, why it's a little bit browser specific. Um, I also want to open this in Notepad++ just so uh, we can edit here. And because it detects the HTML um, file extension, it should colorize the code uh, accordingly. Now, we're not going to write HTML from scratch here. Uh, what I recommend when you're first learning how to do web programming, and actually in most scenarios, is that you find some samples that do uh, close to the thing you want to do, and then you just modify or adapt those samples. And uh, so we're going to do, um, we're going to use two samples. Uh, the uh, today. The first one uh, brings in a GeoJSON layer into a JavaScript API map. So that is in here. If you go to the sample code, I believe it's under layers. Let's see here. CSV and GeoJSON. And um, there is one for a GeoJSON layer. So we're going to do that one. That should just give us the, the layer without any fancy styling. Um, and then uh, the second one we'll do is a uh, class break renderer that we can use to make the Coropleth map. So we're, we're going to do this in two stages. Uh, and usually the first thing you want to do is just make sure you can get the layer to show up. So I'm going to uh, go to the sandbox. Here's the example where they loaded in some GeoJSON of, I don't know, earthquakes or something like that. Um, this is points. Ours is going to be polygons. So it'll be a little different. But in both cases, they'll be pointing at a GeoJSON file. So I'm going to go to the sandbox here. And what I'm going to do is just copy all of this code. We're going to rip it off and uh, start modifying it. So I'm hitting uh, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and going over here to the HTML file, I'm going to hit Control V to paste. Notice how it colorized all of this uh, HTML, and it dropped the code into here. 
And if you're new to HTML and JavaScript, this might look a little bit intimidating, but we're just going to go piece by piece here. So the first one is the title of the tab. And actually, I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have left this on my um, example map here. Uh, that's not the greatest. So uh, let me put a better title on. Um, And then uh, what else do I want to change? I don't want to mess around with any of this stuff. This is referencing uh, the JavaScript API files uh, off of Esri's uh, content uh, delivery network. So uh, I just want to keep getting it from there. That's fine. Um, what do I have? Uh, notice that it brought in, uh, it has to bring in the, the appropriate um, libraries and stuff that it needs to load this. So it brought in GeoJSON layer. I'm not going to mess around with this either. What we're going to do in this part is we're just going to put the path to the um, that GeoJSON file. So I called it um, something a little complicated. <laughs> Let's figure this out. Wa counties May 18th dot GeoJSON. Now, um, I don't need to put any path information here because in my case, it's going to live right in the same folder as the HTML file. So if it, if it doesn't see any path info, it's just going to look in its current folder. Um, okay. I'm going to delete all this comment stuff because it's specific to the earthquake data. Let's get rid of that. And what we have here is like a, a template for the pop-up on these earthquakes. And I'm not going to use that uh, in this sample. Uh, we'll deal with pop-ups in another video. So. I'm going to delete this part. Um, now, uh, in JavaScript, these curly braces uh, denote code blocks, and then it ends with a semicolon. So if you ever delete anything, uh, you don't want to go delete like right in the middle of a, uh, a code block here. Uh, in Notepad++, if you click the little brace, it will show you the beginning one. So uh, I want to make sure I delete all of this carefully. No more, no less. And then down where it deals with a template, I just deleted a, uh, a constant uh, called template. So I need to go down here and um, if it's referencing a template like right here, I need to remove that part or else it's going to, the code's going to fail. So this line will go away and I'll, it'll just go to the default or actually it won't have a pop-up template at first. Okay. Um, so let's do that. And then this renderer stuff, I'm going to set that up later as well. I'm going to get that from another sample. So I'm going to delete all the renderer code very carefully. Uh, I don't want to delete this layer code. Be careful not to do that. Um, but I've deleted that, and then anywhere where it references that renderer, I'm going to just uh, remove that right now. So it says it's optional as well, so I'll delete that. And I, I don't need copyright info on what I'm doing here. Okay, so bare bones basic here. I've got this URL, it's being referenced here when I create this GeoJSON layer. I've got the gray vector base map, that's awesome and then it's adding GeoJSON layer on top. Now we're going to look at Washington State here. So we need to change this latitude and longitude. And let's set it right on the home of our uh, favorite university, uh, which is going to be about 120.55, 46.99. Uh, right in the geographic center of the state. And we'll set it at something like zoom level. Uh, this might take some trial and error, but let's try it on zoom level 8. Now um, to run this thing, uh, you're going to double click your index.html. It should open in your default browser. Here again, I'm testing in Firefox. And uh, it's centered on Ellensburg here like we wanted. It's zoomed in a little bit far. And our GeoJSON is not showing up. So make a long story short, there's some security features in Firefox and in most browsers that uh, when you're accessing a uh, file off the file system like this and not through HTTP, um, it's going to block you from accessing other files, even if they're in the very same folder. So we need to loosen up Firefox security just temporarily while we're doing this in order to be able to load in that GeoJSON. So very carefully, I want you to go to about colon config. And uh, it's going to warn you that this is potentially risky if you leave these settings, if you change these settings. Um, and just start typing unique. And uh, we're going to change the unique origin policy to be false. So once you do that, you don't have to click save or anything here. Uh, you can just switch it off for the time being. And then when you're done developing at the end of this video, 
you go back here and turn it back on if you want to go back to the default settings. Okay, now let's uh, let's retry this. So we'll double click and hopefully we'll get the layer loaded in here. All right, so this time when we load, uh, we get the counties uh, layer showing up. So it loaded in the GeoJSON. Um, let's retry this with a different zoom level. We got to go back a little bit. So let's try like zoom level six, maybe. Um, what you can do uh, is just highlight the address and I hit control F5 to do a full refresh. And that centers it better on what we want. Okay, so we got the layer in there. And now we're going to go and try to apply some uh, thematic styling to this based on the vaccination rate. And so that's where we're going to go to a different sample. Um, so let's go back to the main menu here. And uh, the sample we're going to do is uh, under visualization renderers. A renderer is just a way of drawing a layer. So uh, we're going to draw it in a core plus style uh, with, a, with a color ramp. Um, and we're going to define some class breaks for this. So visualize data with class breaks is the sample that we want. And uh, notice how it's symbolizing thing, uh, looks like census data in Seattle uh, with some different classes. Well, we want, to, we want to do that too, but we want to extend it to maybe five different classes instead of four. Uh, we definitely want a, a nice legend like this. So uh, that'll be a nice challenge to get that into our map. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this code. Uh, we're going to go to the sandbox here and just copy and paste out the parts we want. And uh, what we can do is a little bit of comparison with what we have in uh, our notepad. So uh, first thing we want to compare is uh, this part. Let's just start at the top and kind of see what we need to put in there. So uh, we do want the legend, so we're going to need to um, we're going to need to bring in Esri slash widgets slash legend here, just very carefully in the same format. So Esri slash widgets slash legend. Make sure you get the capitalization matched up. Quote, and then uh, we need to list legend here. We don't need to put feature layer because we already have a layer in here. It's GeoJSON, but um, we do need to put legend like this. Okay. Now, uh, what they're doing, if you just look at the pattern here and study it a little bit, you'll see that each class break has this uh, object defined with some properties that includes a color and an outline and a style. And they have that for each of their classes. So we're going to need to create this for the classes that we want in our map. Also down here, uh, they create this renderer thing and uh, set up a bunch of properties on it. And basically, uh, they make their class breaks and reference this symbol that was defined up higher up. So uh, for example, this class break from 0 to 34.99% is uh, symbolized by this less 35 object that was created right up here on line 32. So the renderer takes these uh, kind of uh, fill symbol objects and uh, puts them together in a bundle to style the layer. And yeah, it looks like a lot of code. It kind of is to, to generate this. But once you get the pattern down, it's pretty straightforward and you can um, slip in new classes in there. You can adjust the class break boundaries uh, pretty easy just by modifying the code. And then down here on the layer, uh, they hook it up to the renderer that they built. So we're going to add this line back in to our GeoJSON layer code uh, in order to get this to work. And then I believe they have a little bit of code down here that uh, creates the legend. So we'll need that as well. So let's do this stuff just one piece at a time. So uh, we're going to go up and make these uh, symbols for each class break and just carefully copy this part. You know what? We can copy all this renderer stuff too because we're going to need to modify that. Uh, but we're going to be careful and stop right before we get to the layer itself. So this is what I have highlighted. I'm going to control C and then I'm going to paste that in um, in the same place where it's pasted in. in the sample, so right about here. And in JavaScript, uh, it order somewhat matters uh, as it's going to be read through chronologically, but in this case, uh, it, it it's okay to put it where we put it. 
Um, let's set up our class break. So I, I want, um, you know, knowing this data range, um, there are some counties that have under 20% and some all the way up over 50%. So let's do an equal interval every 10%, uh, starting out at 50. So I'm going to call this less 20 here. Or, uh, we're going to start out 20 and go up to over 50. So um, this one, um, we've got to decide the color that we want. Now, I wanted uh, a set of green colors, not blue colors. Uh, in HTML, colors are defined by these uh, long codes. So how do you know which code to use? Um, this is where the Color Brewer site is super helpful. So I like to use Color Brewer anyway for picking out uh, colors for my maps. And let's say I want a green color set and I want five classes. And I'm going to do a single hue ramp. Um, look down here. See, it gives you all the codes needed for these. And uh, this one's a little too white for me. I'm going to I'm just going to sneak another class in there. And I'm going to start here instead of starting at this really white one because I don't want it to look like it's empty or no data. So I'm going to start right here with my colors. I'm just going to copy that and boom, paste it right in there. Uh, I'm going to leave the outline the same. That's fine. Uh, my next class will be um, between 20 and 30. And so for that color, grab this code. And you just got to be careful you're pasting everything in the right spot here. It can be easy to make a mistake when you're going back and forth. Let's call this one less 40. Back to Color Brewer. You're getting, you're getting the hang of this, right? Carefully paste it in. Make sure we don't overwrite any quotation marks. That would be, that would cause a problem. Our page probably wouldn't load. JavaScript is unforgiving. HTML and JavaScript are unforgiving. In that way, if one thing's off, uh, the whole thing's going to be broken. Uh, whoops, click the wrong place here. Now I need to add one more because I need over 50 as well. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole block and repeat it down here. And I'll call this uh, over 50. Over 50% 50 vaccinated. Um, and so that's going to be this darkest color of green. Now, when you've got complicated codes like this, copying and pasting is the way to go. The other day when I was uh, rehearsing for this video, which, believe it or not, I actually do a little bit, well, I was just developing this page, trying to get the samples together, and I was typing these codes, and I switched uh, a couple of the numbers, and then I noticed my green was looking really funky and out of place, just a different shade and uh, that's when I found that I'd made a typo here. Okay so we got all these uh, these fill symbols set up and we're gonna now hook those fill symbols into the renderer. So um, first of all we need to tell it um, which type of thing it is. This is a class breaks renderer. We're not going to change that but we do need to also tell it the field that we're uh, looking at and that is in our GeoJSON or we could go back to you know your attribute table in the GIS to look at things. So we're going to do PT Vax May 18. That's the field that this is all going to be based off of. So let's change that. And we're not normalizing it by anything. We already calculated the percentage there. And uh, we can change the legend title here. That's helpful. Uh, percent of people fully vaccinated. Um, there's a default symbol that is used if there's no data anywhere. Uh, it's going to be this backward diagonal fill. Um, I'm going to delete this because um, I don't want that showing up in the legend. So I'm carefully deleting this entire block and the comma. And I'm going to delete the default label as well. A little dangerous because if, if if there's not a data in range uh, in one of these classes, it's going to disappear, but uh, we'll handle that if it happens. Okay, now I need to set up the actual class breaks and then tie them to the symbol I made. So we're going to start with the one that's under 20%. So my min value will be 0, max value 0.2, and this is going to be the one I set up that I call less 20. And the label in the legend, I'm going to say um, under 20%. 
So now I'll go on the next one. The lower bound of that is going to be 20%, and upper bound is going to be 30. And the symbol I'm going to use is the less 30 symbol that I generated up higher there. And I'm going to symbolize it like this, 20 to 30%. And just continue in this fashion, uh, filling out these class breaks. Really watching for typos here. We've got quality uh, is important, or else we're going to have to do some more debugging, right? Go 40 to 50. Oops. Okay, and we're going to need to add one more of these and make sure we put a comma as well. And the comma separates all of the blocks. So do this. And uh, this will be our last one. So the min value will be 50, and then we'll take everything all the way up to 1 and put this as the over 50 symbol. And I'm going to change this to over 50% like that. Okay, so we've got all the, the renderer set up. And then uh, if we go back and look at this um, sample code here, what happens next? Well, we need to um, stick this render onto our layer. So let's go where we set up the GeoJSON layer. And we really don't have much in here right now. <laughs> We're going to do that. OK, and that will apply the render that we had set up. And we also need to, let's look through here. We're not going to do the pop-ups yet. We'll do that later uh, in a different video. Uh, we could put an opacity on. That might be kind of nice. It would let us see some of the islands that are um, behind these boundaries. There's islands back here. So um, oops. let's go in and set um, opacity. Maybe it's something like 0.85. That make, Just make it a little bit transparent. And then uh, what else do we have? Um, our map, we're not going to change that. Um, we've got the map centered the way we want. We do want this legend stuff, so um, let's copy all this, put it in. Notice that I'm not copying this very last line. Uh, that's associated with uh, stuff that's farther up at the top. Okay. I'm going to notepad. Um, and then very carefully, before this final ending block thing, uh, we're going to paste the legend stuff. All right, and uh, we're going to try this. And, you know, maybe if we made a mistake, we'll, we'll debug it. But um, tried to insert everything where it needed to go. Let's take a look at it. Okay, we messed something up because we got a blank page. So, you know, what you can do if uh, this happens is go to Web Developer and open the Web Developer Tools. <clears throat> and it's telling us that there's a, a missing uh, curly brace after the property list, uh, line 93, column 25. So it, it will tell you where to go. Okay, after a little bit of hunting around, I, I realized what happened is I forgot to put a comment here. Gotta, you got to separate these properties with commas. Um, and there's this, this property of the field. And after I replaced it, I didn't put a comma. So then it got confused when I saw legend options. So it wasn't right on 93 like the debugger was saying, but usually it's in the neighborhood. So it'll point that out. Let's, uh, let's do a total refresh here, and we'll see how things shake out. I see some warnings, but no errors yet. And uh, hopefully I'll get a map and a legend. Awesome. Okay. And we see that there's some uh, a little bit of transparency here like we wanted. And we got this legend. We can just check it and make sure everything looks fine. Ooh, I don't really like this title here, uh, legend title being GeoJSON. <laughs> so let's see uh, if we can figure out where to change that. So one way to figure this out would be to hunt around in our code to find out if there's a, uh, a, a string GeoJSON anywhere that we can change like this. Hey, 
I don't, I don't see anywhere in this code where I have that. So the next thing I would do is I'd go to the sample and see, see how they call this Seattle block groups. Well, I want to find the place in this code where they did that. So I'm just going to look through here carefully and uh, boom, there it is. So they put a title property on the layer itself. Let's see if I can do that on the GeoJSON layer. So I'm going to go to the layer, which is right here. And right after URL, I'm going to set up a title. And let's call this Washington counties. Now, this time I'm not going to forget, put a comma right here. And uh, we'll save and retry this. I'm just going to hit F5. Okay, excellent. So now, now I've got this title on the legend, uh, which is much more like what I want. And then uh, just a little sanity check. Things are looking pretty good with how these colors match up uh, with the legend. So this is as far as we're going to go in this video. In another video, I'll talk about pop-ups. Um, and you can work through uh, these examples and try to code it uh, yourself.